Hi, my name's Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about the market and what we're hearing across the news. And a lot of you have been heavily impacted from what's gone on in the market this year. Most of you will be down across the board in all of your accounts. It's another one of those years where it doesn't matter what you're invested in, it's gone down. And what's compounded that for most of you is that bonds have also fallen in price. So if you have a mutual fund with bonds in it, or you own bond fund, anything like that, they, they've gone down and they've gone down for a lot of them, double digits. So when you look at a balanced mutual fund, which a lot of you watching these videos are in, you know, they, they fall in 15 to 20% from the equities, and then they fall in 10 to 15% from the bonds as well. So you've gotten hit very hard. And what makes it very confusing is what do you do now? You know, you look at your portfolio, you're down 10, 15, 20%. Should I get out? Do I change my investments? Do I stay the course? There's obviously a few different avenues or forks you can go down. And I know a lot of you watching this video are saying, but Adam, last time this happened or the last five times this happened, I had room to play before retirement. I'm getting close to retirement now and this is affecting me even more. So I'm gonna talk directly to you guys as well in this video, so stay tuned. The problem with most of us is that we watch too much TV, we read too much online, and we don't know what we're looking at or reading. And I always go back to uh, when I was having some health issues earlier this year, I didn't know what was going on. So what do I do? I Google it. And that is honestly the worst thing. When I went into my doctor, I said, I've started Googling stuff and this is what I've come up with. And he's like, Adam, shut that stuff down. Like, don't read it because it's just bad information. Like a good doctor isn't typically on Google putting good information out there. It's the Joe Blows of the world putting bad information out there that scares you. It puts you down rabbit holes. So don't read it. And I think it's the same philosophy for us with a lot of the news that we read. And I'm talking about people that come on and talk about this. A lot of them are educated, smart people, but you have to be careful of, you know, what they're saying, why they're saying it, what's behind it all. A lot of analysts, financial analysts, make their name by hitting home runs. But if you look at their track record, they'll have year after year after year of not doing well. Michael Burry is a good example of that, right? He'll say the market's crashing, the market crashed, and then it finally crashes, and he's a hero because he predicted it. But for many years before that, he was wrong. So you have to be careful who you're listening to, what you're listening to, what you're reading. And there's definitely mixed messages out there. And I'm gonna read through kind of both sides of the mixed messages. And I think what happens is a lot of us will kind of tunnel vision down one avenue. And it's based on our psychological and emotional feelings towards what's going on. And for most of us, it's negative. So in the last couple of weeks, here's a few of the articles. So a Bloomberg economic model forecasts 100% chance of US recession in the next 12 months. Jeff Bezos warned companies to batten down the hatches in response to Goldman Sachs CEO saying there's a good chance we'll have a recession. Elon Musk guesstimates that we're going to be in a recession probably until spring of 24. Again, highly respect Elon Musk and the businesses he creates, but is he a financial analyst? Like, sure, he sees stuff going on within the companies, but again, there's also a benefit for him to drive down markets, for him to get into investments that are now cheaper. So again, there, there's always a background. Now, I'm not saying he's doing that. I'm saying there could be something behind that, right? So just, again, be aware. Now on the flip side of those, uh, the Bank of Montreal CEO said that while analysts are warning of a recession and slow spending, we don't see that here at Bank of America. Transaction volumes for its customers jumped 10% in September of 2022 and the first half of October over the earlier year. American Express CEO, we're not seeing any changes in consumer spending and predicted a strong holiday quarter for retail and travel. Uh, United Airlines CEO is optimistic about 2023. Again, American Airlines is going to say we're optimistic because they want their share price and shareholders and the, the pessimism around airlines and flight and travel to go away. So again, there, there's you play both sides of the coin. Now, I think what you guys need to do that are watching, gals and girls are watching this video, you need to tune out. And too often we over tune in. I think we actually need to tune out. Nobody has the crystal ball. I think what you have to do is tune out the news and tune into your portfolio. If you're worried about your portfolio going down 10, 15, 20%, the question I ask you is what do you own and why do you own it? And if you can't answer that question, then you need to talk to your financial advisor, your investment person, whoever it is that you deal with and break down your portfolio. It might be time to make adjustments. So you actually know why you own what you own. So you actually know what you own. Most of you have no idea what you own in your portfolio other than I own you know, mutual fund company ABC. And that's it, and that's a problem. Mutual funds had a net redemption in September. I just saw this the other day, it came through my desk, of nine 
billion with a B, nine billion dollars of net withdrawals out of mutual funds. That's massive. People are getting out of mutual funds. My concern with that is, are people getting out of mutual funds and going into cash? Like if you're sitting there looking at your portfolio down 20% and you're close to retirement and you're like, Adam, I, I can't take this anymore. I'm going to cash. Before you do that, before you panic sell, you need to understand that if I go to cash and I put myself in, in cash and earn 2%, can I still meet my retirement goals? That's number one. And if you don't know that answer, I'd be cautious going to cash. That could be a really bad decision. That could set you back two, three, four years. It could massively reduce. If you're already in retirement, that could massively reduce your income going forward. Again, look at any chart of any index. If you zoom in tight, you'll see like 2008, 2020, there's years between 2011, 2015, 2018. There's years in there where the markets are going down. But if you zoom out, it's going up. We go through these phases. And again, you have to take your blinders off. Now, do I know what's going to happen in the next month, three months, six months, 12 months? Of course not, I don't have the crystal ball, neither do you. And neither do the people that are on the radio, on the TV, online, telling you that it's gonna be good or bad. They don't know. Sure, some of them CEOs, they can see the numbers behind things. They'll share a bit of that. You can take a bit of knowledge, but again, you're going both ways. Right here, Bloomberg, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, people that run big, big companies are saying we're going bad. And then you have Bank of America, American Express, like travel saying it's going to go good. Which one is it? Again, you're getting these mixed messages. So before you kind of flee out of your investments, understand what that impact is on you versus let's ride this out. Let's maybe draw a bit less income for the next three, six, 12 months. Let the investments come back up. Cause again, look at any, any map over time, investments go up over time. Portfolios go up over time. You have to give it time you're gonna have these bumps. Now we're in a tough time, absolutely. For a lot of you though, I think it's time to take a step back, take a look at your portfolio, what you own, why you own it. Again, I'm a big proponent of owning blue chip dividend paying stocks. That's what my portfolio is. So in a time like this, I know I'm not close to retirement like a lot of you watching the video, but in a time like this, I look at my portfolio and I, you know, I look at it about once a week, where I'm at, how it's doing, what I own. I know every company owner. I own 43 different companies in my portfolio. I know everyone pays me a dividend, has a history of increased dividends and increased earnings. I know why I own those companies. That to me gives me comfort. So if I look at my portfolio and FedEx drops like it did, I think it was in October, or early September, or August or, August or early September, FedEx dropped about 15% one day. I know the quality of FedEx. I know it's a company that's pretty hard to replicate. I know the financials behind it. I know it's gonna do long, good long-term. I'm not worried about the big, huge drop. It's going to come back. Again, I know the dividends. I'm collecting that dividend in the meantime. And someone asked me like, Adam, why do you like dividends so much? It's in times like this. So when the market's down or even flat, I'm still collecting a bit of basically rental income. That dividend is a rental income to me. For owning that company, I'm getting that my rent check. And I think for a lot of you, when you hit retirement, dividends can be a great kind of buffer in markets like this. You're still gonna collect that dividend. Maybe you need to slow down cash flow in times like this when the markets aren't great. But if you can slow down cash flow, most of that come from dividends, you're not selling equities, you're not selling bonds, you're letting your stuff kind of ride and hopefully come back up. And to prove how excited I get about this stuff, I wear a uh, Samsung watch and it literally, I'm sitting here recording the video and it just picked up that I'm working out. So that's how my heart rate gets up on this stuff. So I love it, but I get frustrated when people panic sell and they, they derail their retirement on a very bad decision. And so hopefully this video will let you take a step back, review what you have, Talk to your investment advisor. Again, a lot of you have moved to DIY, which, hey, it's, it's not a bad decision, but I've talked about this before and that a lot of you were in mutual funds. You're paying a high price, you weren't getting service or advice or anything like that, and you're wasting money. And, and I 100% agree with you. But a lot of you have jumped the other ship, which is DIY, which has no planning. And when we go through tough markets, I find, and I talk to DIY investors every day, that the DIYers often bail out because they don't have a clear strategy. Their strategy was to save fees. And now they don't know what to do because their investments are down. They don't really know what they own. They just bought a few ETFs or whatever it is to keep their costs low and they're panicking. And a lot of them panic sell into cash. They don't know when to get back in. They have no strategy anymore and it's derailing their retirement. So make sure, sure you might want to get out of the high price here. If you go DIY, again, fill that middle gap with an advisor. 
hire someone on an hourly or consulting. Again, we offer fee-for-service planning. If, if that's a need for you, you can learn more on our website at parallelwealth.com slash planning. Don't be a DIY investor that has no direction, that panics, that, that doesn't really know what they own just to save money. It's not going to save you money long-term, I promise you that. Also, if you're over in mutual funds and it's a bit of a black box and you don't know why you own what you own and you need to get out of that, start talking to your investment advisor, whether it's at the bank, wherever you're at. Go have a chat with them. Open up that conversation. Am I in the best investment? The last thing I wanna comment on here is, and I get this every day is, okay, Adam, I'm in a bad investment. I figured that out, but should I just hold on till the markets come back or should I make the move now? And my answer is going forward for the next 6, 12, 24 months, pick a time frame. If the market goes down another 20%, where are you going to be best positioned? And if it goes up another 20% from here, where are you best positioned? It's probably not your portfolio. If you've determined your portfolio is not a great one for you, then making a move to a better structured portfolio is gonna be good for you whether the market goes down or up. If you're actually making that good move. Again, I don't know what that portfolio looks like for you, the risk, all that kind of stuff. You have to determine that with your advisor. But don't be hesitant to make a sideways move. Remember, if you sell, it's like in the real estate market, right? If you sell in a low market, you're buying in a low market. It's the same with stocks, same with investments. So if you're buying, or if you're selling out of this market and rebuying in, that's fine. Just make sure you don't sell out of this market and sit on the sidelines and miss the upswing. Sure, you may miss the downswing, but what's the cost of missing the upswing for you? Is it delayed retirement, less income in retirement? What does that look like? Make sure you understand the consequence of that before you just jump ship. So coming from someone that's advised clients for the last 17 years through many of these markets, have been through 2008, 2011, 15, 18, 2020, and now this again, I can say that Emotionally, it's tough. It's tough to look at a statement, even me. I don't like to look at my statement and I'm down on the air. But stay the course, understand what you own, why you own it, understand your investment, and understand your plan, your cash flow needs, and stay the course. And if your course isn't a good one, then you need to redirect that. But don't jump ship, get off the boat, and stay in the water. It's gonna cost you long-term. Hang in there, be careful what you watch online, and we'll see you in the next video.